Now let's understand this. How can we delegate access across AWS accounts using IAM roles? So as it is mentioned here, you can share resources in one account with users in different account. So you can share the resources in your account with users in different account. And we can do this by setting up cross account access. And in this way, you don't have to create individual IAM users in each account. That's a good thing. Let's suppose you are a developer in the developer account and you want to access an S3 bucket in the production account. And you don't want other teams from your account, like the testing team, to be able to have the same rights. So what we are trying to do here, we are just trying to give or the developer team to have access to the S3 buckets in the production account, not the testing team. So how can we achieve this? And this can be achieved with three steps. Let me tell you those three steps. First step is to create a role in the production account. The important thing here is to establish a trust relationship between the prod account and the dev account. So the first step, we need to create an IAM role called update app. You can use the name of your choice. It's not a keyword. So we have to first create an IAM role. And in that update app role, we need to define the development account as the trusted entity and specify the permission policy that will allow trusted users to update the S3 bucket at production. And once we are done with the trust relationship and the role creation, the second step is to grant access to the role. Here we will update the IAM role with a deny effect for the tester group for the update app role so that only the dev team has access. You might ask me why to explicitly define a deny. If we don't add also it should work because there is the implicit deny. But let's suppose your testing group has an admin or, or a power user privilege. In that case, if we don't add, it will not work. We need to add a deny rule explicitly. Now let's come back to the last part. Step number three, which is test access by switching the roles. Once the roles are set up, when both dev team and the testing team tries to access the role or assume the role, let's see what happens. Yes, as the policy determines, allow for dev team, the dev team only will have the access. Hence, with these three steps, we can delegate access across AWS account using IAM roles. But this is just the image. Let's see how the policy actually looks like. Let's see the policies and trying to understand how it works. The first thing that you need to understand is that you don't need to create IAM users in the prod account for the other accounts to make use of. That's clear because we are just delegating access because our purpose is to delegate access from dev to prod for the same users, but just by assuming the role that we create. And the first and foremost thing for us is to create the IAM role on prod and establish a trust relationship with the dev account. Let's see the policy here that is associated with the role that is update app role. So if you see here, we have the version 2012, 10, 17, this is standard. And this statement has multiple inner blocks within it. So this is the first statement, this is the second statement, and this is the third statement. And the effect is allow for the first one. And the action is S3 list all my buckets and the resource is star. So the first operation allows all the list uh, bucket operations and then we have the second policy where the effect is allow but the action is list bucket get bucket location for the resource production app so imagine production app to be the bucket name of the s3 bucket that the dev account developers want to make use of and the third one is the effect equal to allow get object put object delete objects are the action and it is for the object level access for production app bucket and you already know why we have separated into different blocks and not written it like test star or production app star because of the complexity and the granularity of the permissions. And once you have created the role here, at the last step when you're creating the role, you have to choose at the last step as the role type to be an AWS account. And you have to add the dev account ID there in the step, last step. And that's how we create the trust relationship for that particular role that we are going to define here. And now we have created the role in the production account. And the next thing that we have to do is we have to create a policy in the dev account. And that will be a assume role policy. This, to, this is used to modify the developer user group to allow them to switch to the update app role, which is created in prod. So this portion is for the dev account. And this policy states that effect is allow 
and the action is STS assume role. So using STS, we are able to assume the role and on what? And thus the resource here will be ARN AWS IAM production account ID. This is the production account ID colon role. That is the resource type. And what is the role ID? That is update app. So this is the update app role. And that is what we are going to assume the role as. And remember, this is created in the production. This is created in the dev account. And one more thing that we had in mind, that was to restrict access of the tester user group. And here to deny the access, what we can do is we can write the same policy, but just we will give the effect equal to deny so that they should not be able to assume the role of that particular update app in the production account. And this policy will be attached to the tester user group so that they will not be allowed to assume or set action of STS assume role on the resource that is production account colon role slash resource ID is update app. So I hope you got the point on how we have created the role in the production and how we have maintained the policies at the dev side. And this will actually help you to assume the role and to make use of the resources in the product.